What is good? We're back. And we're ready to roll. <laughs> Fresh crack. We got some buy sell holds, of course, for your pleasure. Uh, we're going to hit you right off the rip. We got Big D checking in from the West Coast, the old left coast. How you doing, bud? Big D from the 253. Mm, I'm doing great, go. man. Doing good. Let's go. We're holding it down in the 843. So hmm. look at us. Um, from Charleston to Seattle, the FF Dynasty presents Married to the Game. Married to the Game. <laughs> All right. We got some buy, sell, hold. Let's start off with, with, with David. David. <laughs> well, Independence Day drop for you there. David Montgomery over right. there. Just, just everybody's trash can. Just the Astros beat on them during the uh, World Series. <laughs> Just everybody's <laughs> trash can. Just they're banging on him to cheat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nobody, nobody. I uh, just, you know, uh, Jamal Williams. Like now he's Jamal Williams plus 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 plus. This guy's out here doing what he pretty much always does. And you know, if he's healthy, he typically has won you fantasy championships. Gets good late, except he's been great uh, on a good team. It's ama- amazing how when you put a, you know. Uh, mid player on a good team, they're good. Um, and I don't think David Montgomery's mid. I think he's like, you know, d- at least double mid. Um, <laughs> he's a he's a mid upper class. Right? Double mid, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I lo- love David, and the value was so good on David this year. He's right now really supporting the uh, middle class of of dynasty running backs. Um, so, what are we doing with David Montgomery right now? Is this a buy? Is this a sell? Is it a hold? You know, dynasty wise, we worrying about Gibbs long term. Redraft wise, is you know, you you trying to move up or you just rolling with David? What are you thinking here? Yeah, swimming in the deep here. I'm I'm holding Monty if I have him. I mean, obviously, if I'm going to rebuild, that's that's a different different story. I think um, I think depending on what the state of your rebuild is, and and if you're trying not to score points, you may want to get rid of him because the dude's just scoring. You know, he's he's lately he's just been lights out. Um, you know, plugging us early in the season, we uh, we had some hesitancy with Gibbs just because we didn't think Monty was a was a scrub, right? He, we we felt like he was better than Jamal. Uh, we he's he's been a he's been a staple when he was with the Bears. Like the the dude just, I mean, he broke like the the snap like running with the 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 rubber band thing on him in mm-hmm. preseason i remember him snapping i'm like oh here we go baby here we go and uh here he is so no he, he's doing great i mean it you know part of it's money part of it's that coach uh coaching um ben johnson that they, yeah ben johnson um they they know what they're doing there man i mean they they know how to use the running back by this last season they, obviously yeah and a great o-line <laughs> that helps a lot yep but uh but they but they know how to scheme it up man and 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 monty knows how to hit those holes and so um you asked about gibbs i'm not i'm not too concerned about gibbs because um you know one they're winning uh two they're they're looking great and uh he he could eat into this but even if he does i mean i don't think anybody in the season was saying monty's a top five running back right so if monty comes back down to life a little bit but he's still on a great offense with a lot of opportunity and he's getting those uh back in our our rb12 rb13 type of numbers i think you're still okay with that personally um so i I don't know if i answered your question no um but that that, that's kind of my my gut uh in my plums feel on money right now i'm holding if i can buy him sure yeah i'd love to try to send something for him um you know something like uh if i'm if i'm normally you know you're running back needy so can i send you know um in in dynasty can i send uh we talked about him last show dj Moore and dj Moore and get monty plus back right can i get dj Moore? can no, i send I dj so. Moore and get monty in a first back like you could get a haul yeah 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 i mean i think you know pieces like that i think i would uh i would i would look to in in redraft i don't i don't I don't know how to play him in redraft just because it, it's you know redraft can be hard you know maybe i would send um, you know, I would send some kind of, um, uh, um, middling or in my mind, a mid- could it, maybe I'd send Garrett Wilson because of the namesake. I might send Garrett Wilson for money and something. In a redraft uh, you know, some, yeah. 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 Can I, can I send Garrett Wilson, um, 
get money and uh, Josh Palmer, you know, uh, something like that. And, and that might even be too low, but just just something that is going to plug some points in my wide receiver for these bye weeks and and solidify my, uh, you know, my running back to position. I, I might do something like that as well. Yeah. Feels, feels like redraft wise that maybe maybe like a swap for James Cook might be if you could figure that out somehow. Sure. Might just ride money. That's what I mean. That's what I'm saying. Oh like, yeah, if I could get money for if James I, Cook, if I could figure out, would you would you want to figure out how to you know go up? The only reason I'm trading money in redraft is to go up and running back. If I'm not going up and running back or an elite wide receiver, then about, I'm not really moving him. How about Brian Robinson Jr. or Montgomery redraft? Let me get the better team, yeah. better better O line, better quarterback. Because I mean Gibbs, not only was he battling like. And maybe he was battling issues injury wise the first couple of weeks, and we didn't really know about it. But he's battling not only injuries, but like shares of tar- of, of targets and catches and, and and attempts. And it's clear the Lions, even when they had Swift, they they look at James Williams, Jamal Williams led the league in touchdowns. Like it was crushing from a fantasy standpoint last year. And th- and now you get an upgrade, and Monty's so solid, paid. They want to use him, and we don't even know if Gibbs. Like, am I worried about? Gibbs for Monty's long term fantasy. Like, no, I'm worried about Monty's long term impact on Gibbs. I'm worried about Gibbs. You know, like, I'm not necessarily worried about Gibbs. I think the talent still will play out. So I'm down to acquire some cheaper Gibbs and hold the Gibbs that I have. And I'm, I'm not like waning on Gibbs. But I mean, Monty's awesome. And in Dynasty, sure, you could try and move him if you're rebuilding. But if you're not, then, you know. Yeah. So same question in Dynasty, uh, James Cook or Brian Robinson Jr., either one uh, for David Montgomery. Would, were you trying to figure out how to make that move? If you're I, know, I guess it really doesn't matter if you're a competing team. Those guys all, all are all kind of in the wash right there. Um, points wise or similar. Yeah, I'm down to do that. And when I said when I'm talking about this rebuild thing, too, which we, we may or may not get to a rebuild video this week, but uh I almost wanted to put Monty on there because I have Monty in a team where I think I'm in the midst of a rebuild. I haven't started off well. I lost Mike Williams. I got some injuries. It's a very deep roster uh, starting lineup requirements, and it's like maybe I should be trying to move off Monty, but he's paid. He's going to be there for another two years. It looks awesome. Like It's a pretty awesome floor with a ceiling that's also there yeah. so how far away are you in your rebuild do you don't necessarily like i thought i had another team where i was like oh man i'm coming in this year I'm, I'm probably gonna have to break this down and we compete for the first overall pick in that so i didn't trade off like kamar and keenan allen and tyler lockett at the end of last year because i wanted to use those guys to compete to get Bijan, which i did and i drafted puka so now i'm like ready to go i'm like first in points and 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 second in record so one year just like that, I thought I needed to rebuild this team, but I made a couple of good moves and got a, made a couple of good picks, and boom, I'm ready to go. Um, you know, I, if you're one year away, maybe you don't trade money. Yeah, I mean, he's RB8, and he missed a game. He's averaging uh, 20.2 points per game. He's RB6 in points per game. Um, so, you know, Dynasty, I think I would as well swap for James Cook. Obviously, the Bills are a good offense. I just trust the Lions to use their running back uh, like we've seen the usage for Monty be a little more, and I feel safer with Monty. With Monty, uh, James Cook, Brian Robinson Jr. is interesting. He's been great. The Redskins look like they're 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 or the Commanders rather look like they're you know and could be possibly an ascending team um, after yeah. Ron's out of there. Um, they need to transition like those frames, um, <laughs> but so that one's maybe a little bit more interesting for me. Um, Hopefully faster than those frames transition. So Brian Robinson or Monty in in Dynasty, Big D, and we'll move on. Um, I I think I'm Monty. I, I the the only thing that gives me a little bit of hesitancy with Monty is is uh, Jamison William Williams. Man, I, the meh. Uh, Jamison Williams coming back. Um, you know he he came back. He didn't. You know he he was there, but he was forty seven percent of the snaps. Like it'll be interesting once they have. Um, I, I I'm. Assuming you both are still on the Jamison Williams train, you know, oh, sure. talent wise. And so like he's he's a he's he's a pretty high level talent. Can he can he put it to work on the field? That's to be determined. Um, he hasn't really been on the field. So people who are saying he can't, uh, I, I don't <laughs> I'm not listening to because right. um, because, uh, you know, his, if his availability goes up and he's yeah. on the field, then that could um, change the way that running game goes. But but again, that. 
that would just be, I just wanted to bring it up because that is probably the one item. I, I'm more concerned, I guess, another way to say this, I'm more concerned about Jameson than I am about Gibbs when it comes to money. Interesting. Because Jameson can just be a, a, a basically take a drive away in a mm -hmm. game. He, yeah, he could take a drive because away. Because he's he could one take... of those kind of players. Yeah, uh, you know when you got um, hmm. you got uh, when you got Sun God out there, and you got Jamison, and you got Laporta. I mean, now you're starting to put a bunch of weapons on the field, right? And and I think that ups the the value, right, for for Monty from his touches perspective. But but it and also TDs, can, which have already been good, you which know. have already been good, right? So Third then if and you TDs. Start, yeah, if you start saying, okay, well. But they've got all these options. I, I think those are the where you could start getting some of those blank games where he might get seven points, eight points because mm -hmm. they just don't need them, right? You know. Yeah. Um, but but on the flip side, I mean, if they start scoring more points, I, I I don't think so. Another way to also say this is I don't know if they're going to score more more points with Jameson. I just think that the Do the it. way the targets and the offense might run a little bit different, which then of course takes away touches. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. All right. That's I don't I don't I don't hate the exploring that area, but. Uh... All right, let's let's uh let, let's shift over to a, a young guy here who's uh you know five seven a buck eighty seven, in uh, Jaleel McLaughlin. Um, mm -hmm. Oh yeah, we had uh, KJ on last week. Or I don't know when that was exactly, but he mm -hmm. was saying that McLaughlin was a trap, um, and that mm -hmm. you should be getting out from him. And you know, obviously five seven one eighty seven. We've seen you know undrafted or or you know. Uh, late drafted rookie running backs be, you know, fr flashes in the pan. And we've seen some of them kind of stick around, um, you know, Philip Lindsay uh, for the Broncos co you know, could, could come to mind there. Uh, but McLaughlin mm -hmm. comes in right here and just in week four and five, he's RB nine. Now I'm just saying in, in week four and five, he's RB nine. Um, he's averaged 18.7 points uh, per game. He's put up 8.8 .8 yards per attempt running back two with a, in his PFF grade. 16 attempts, 140 yards. Number two in yards after contact per attempt with 5.88. And runs of 10 or more, 10 yards or more. Five of those in those 16 attempts. Uh, three, that, that's good for third. Uh, runs over 15. He, ha he has three of those. That's good for fourth. His breakaway percentage is 64.3. That's good for third in these two weeks. Uh, seven targets, six receptions. His targets per route run are 2.94. That's, that's good for fourth. In those two weeks, and his elusive rating is 240.3 from PFF. Obviously, A Chain's got like 300, but those two guys, uh, they're the only ones in the 200s uh, in the elusive rating category uh, for PFF. So, you know, it's it, he's explosive. He he's passing some some check marks on some of these uh, glassing pushes pusher stats, and then he's passing the eye test. And we know Sean Payton is a guy who seem can be loyal to the guys that he kind of brings in. Um, and yeah. we've got you know uh, we we me and Jason were talking about it. Maybe is this his Darren Sproles now? Like you know, P Ryan's been pretty good when you look at him overall. Uh, but th basically, they could get out of him if they wanted to him for like a million dead uh, or they can keep him on the team and Javante is coming off an injury. So uh, McLaughlin really could carve out a role here with Sean Payton uh, moving forward. And I, I think, you know, I think conventional wisdom sell says, you know, sell now and see what you can get. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm willing to roll the dice in another week or two and see if we can get a little more here. Yeah, hundred percent, man. He he was one of my dynasty stashes. Um, you know, in FFD two, we threw him on the on the taxi squad. Shout out to Zach. Um, and the only reason why was um, early reports was he's first in the building, last out. And I know that can get kind of like, oh, okay, but the, the dude wasn't guaranteed a spot on the team, and he was he was he's hungry. He he wanted it. He he wanted the opportunity. He wanted to do. He wanted to show, and he's got his opportunity. And guess what? He's showing. So. Yeah. When you got a personality like that, when you got so for me, is it um, would I be buying him? Prob probably not. I mean, I guess it depends on the price. I mean, I wouldn't mind buying him, but it, but people may be, you know, depending on like, could I get him for a third? He was a fourth round or or, or um, not drafted at all, depending on your league. Like, yeah, when you draft, I'd send him a yeah. third. I'd send him for a third all day right now. I'd activate him off my taxi squad. I'd um, you know, if if I had him and I'm semi competing, I think he's he's worth 
activating and, and bringing in. Um, so Javante doesn't play next week. He, he goes in your lineup unless obviously you've got a really, mm -hmm. really solid lineup. But if you're sure. for running backs, like, you know, he's, he's in the lineup next week with no Javante. Oh yeah. Yeah. He was in my flex lineup this week. Uh, nice. you know, I, I, I needed, you know, part of it's buys and some of it's injury, but I mean, he's, he, he's, he's now shown that he's proven that he can at least play a flex play role on your team. If, if you need him, you know, um, especially with Javante out, like you said, um, I, I, you know, I, and it was against, uh, it was against the jets. So let's also take that in consideration. It yeah. wasn't like it was against, you know, some, uh, I'm not going to name a name, but it wasn't a bottom run defense type of team. It's not like they were playing the Broncos. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> exactly. exactly. Like, I mean, he has to practice against his own team and he's still this good. So, yeah. you know, like, no, I mean, but, but, but he, you know, I, I don't know. He, to, to me, he's very interesting. I definitely think of, I would kick the tires on a third um, and redraft. I might, I might look at him, um, especially if I'm, you know, yeah. I, I think there's been enough injuries or inconsistencies where, I'm always looking for running backs, no matter no matter what type of play I'm playing. Um, but 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 in redraft, he's definitely somebody interesting because I don't think he might be on your waiver wire. Well, he probably isn't now, but but he, you know he he somebody probably scooped him off the waiver wire, and you might be able to get him for um, yeah for pennies on the dollar. So yeah, no, I, I I'm with you. I scooped him up in some spots. For me, he's he's a hold and start if if one of the running backs aren't there. And then if the run, if the, if the value goes up enough, yeah. then sure. I'll cash out. I'm, I'm not going to cash out for the third. Maybe if you gave me a two, I might consider, um, mm -hmm. you know, what about a two, three swap? I give you a two, you give me him and a third. I, I might, I might on do a, that. On a um, but I mean, it's, you know, it's hard right now that you're, that you're seeing that. I mean, if I don't want running back points in my lineup, I'm down to scoop a two and net a two. But I mean, honestly, I have a hard time not just waiting and seeing with these types of players, especially the way he looks. I mean, right. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like he passes, he checks some boxes on some of the markers of, of production as far as number wise. And then he also checks the boxes of like, holy shit, who's that guy? Yeah. Uh, doesn't look out like there. he can tackle him. He's right. not out there very often. 33% of the snaps the last two weeks, but damn. Right. And, and Javante could be missing big chunks of this season because of like we mentioned in the last video where he's you know you're coming off a major knee came back earlier than expected and now you know you may have calves quads hamstrings groins all kind of you know overcompensating for things so could be a bumpy ride and and, and Peyton's one of those guys that seems to kind of stick with his guys I mean Darren Sproles is yeah. a guy that that could come to mind uh, as being you know a souped up new version of that and you know i think as we're growing and learning uh we're we're starting to kick at least i am uh, uh kicking a whole lot of historical data to the side because it's just we're in a new era the historical data i don't think matters as much With as the size size and and Water some of these markers and i just don't know that how much it matters as much as it used to yeah. um especially if you're not investing heavily in guys like mclaughlin so uh, yeah, I think this is a hold, a wait and see approach for the most part, and and I'll fire him up, no problem, like you said. Yeah, but it, but it, I mean, back to our boy KJ, I, I, I he, there's nothing wrong with trying to sell him too. I no, mean, sure, you know, if, that's if what I let off with. Conventional yeah, wisdom probably says yeah, sell. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, for, for me, it's not so much Javante, it's it's Samaje. Like he just hasn't looked right. I don't know if he's dealing with something or if there's something else going on with him. Like that's where I think that he he still has some staying value is because he's. He's showing that he can. So if Javante comes back a little bit stronger, I just don't know if P. Ryan is is there. There's a possibility that he could get into that RB two role over Javante. And, yeah, I'm, I mean, honestly, like yeah. I'd look at it as if Javante gets healthy and and can get back to the state that he was. These two are the one two, and P. Ryan fades fades away a little bit. Um, yeah. So I I mostly agree with you there. If you look at it as a whole, P. Ryan. And, and efficiency numbers are a whole lot better than Javante, but he's also coming off a crazy injury uh, that he really probably shouldn't even been out there for the first six games. Yeah, to yeah, be honest. So, uh, but yeah. yeah. So, all right. Uh, let, let's keep it moving here. Let's. I want to throw a couple of quick ones in there. Roshan Johnson, we've been on the buy list for a while here, staying on the buy list, going to get an opportunity here. Um, so I, I think. You know, gets the opportunity. I don't think you sell. I think you hold. Uh, or if you can still buy, uh, Roshan's a buy. And Rashi Rice remains on the buy list uh, for us. Uh, just 
Last week, I didn't, I didn't get to the number this week, but last week he was tied, and we've been talking about this every single week. Anytime we bring up Rashi Rice, the targets per route run are ridiculous. He was tied with Devontae Adams coming into this week in targets per route run. Obviously, Devontae is playing a ton more snaps, but it like MVS being the leader on this team and snaps and routes run, it's got to fucking stop. Like mm-hmm. he, there's no he's, there's no reason for that guy to be fucking out there. Rasheed Rice is coming. I feel like you know, and I, I just I, I don't. He hasn't exploded yet. He's had some some spots. He's also had some drops. Um, but I feel like if you're if you're paying attention and watching these games, Rice comes in, catches some catches some big balls in some big spots. Has had some drops, like I said, but uh, just remains a buy uh, through through these couple of weeks here, and I, I think has. Is starting to earn more and more time uh, throughout this this season because it's like, man, you can't just be keep rolling out Justin Watson and uh, MVS, and I mean, at some point, Sky Moore is like he's better than Sky Moore already. Like, just give Mm -hmm. you gotta ramp him up, and if you can keep Tony healthy, Tony's in the same kind of boat with yards, uh, targets per route run kind of deal. I think. Tony and Rice, if they could get healthy, should be the starting wide receivers for this Chiefs, and maybe we'll see it by the end of the season uh, if they can stay healthy and, and not have any bonehead uh, kind of mistakes kind of that really detriment uh, the Chiefs' abilities to win games. Uh, and any quick thoughts on those guys, Big D? Just on Rice, I mean, his snap percentage is so low, and he's still producing. You know, right. he's, I think he's the target. When he's out there, he's the target. I think, right. and, and, and you said that, but, but I just want to reemphasize that. Like, he's last three weeks he's had um what 16 16 targets um and you know if we take out kelsey i mean i think sky Moore and could uh and tony are at like nine each yeah. so uh, he's, he's definitely somebody that patrick looks for i think as it goes on and, and this thursday night game will be interesting because if travis isn't out there i think we're going to see I, I, we might see a little bit more of a game plan as to what their offense could look like if they're not going through um, the tight end position and, and, right. and at some and point me, you're not going to have Travis and I don't know he's a cyborg but, I don't know yeah it could be but right, but, but I, I think this week is going to be very interesting so if, if I'm if I'm looking to buy him I, I definitely think I would try to see what I could do this week because um, yeah his snap percentage is so low in comparison to his output it's 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 insane all right let's wrap up with one more we'll dive a little deeper into this one I uh, just want to hit those guys um mm-hmm. We had we had standalone game Sunday night and the Cowboys just got beat up by the Niners and standalone games. I feel like really in the court of public opinion, start changing values like everybody saw Ritter on the um, London game and everybody was like Ritter, Ritter Ritter's absolute trash. Nobody's talking about Ritter this week like Ritter was was pretty decent this week. Nobody's saying shit about Ritter. And nobody saw it and nobody cares, but they saw him that week and he wasn't good and he stinks. No, nobody cares that it was basically his rookie season. Um, you know, and Tony Pollard comes out there and the, the glasses pushing efficiency nerds have been begging for this to happen. And all of a sudden he comes out there and he just looks a whole lot less efficient. So it's like, does, does the efficiency scale? I, I don't know that it does. Uh, I think Tony Pollard's a good player. <laughs> efficiency is not to scale. <laughs> um, I think Tony Pollard is a good player. I think what you saw in those uh, first couple of weeks is is more indicative of uh, what Tony Pollard is. Um, but you know, l- last week you just Sam Fran came out there, New England. He puts up nine and eight in his last two games, and then you know Arizona fifteen, New York Jets nineteen, and, and Giants week one with twenty two. So. I didn't know if you maybe thought there was an opportunity to buy low if you if you were interested in Pollard or. I see somebody on the next good game you're looking to get out from. Pollard's been hard for me um, dynasty-wise from a value perspective, but it, but I'm going to take it from a redraft angle here real quick. I, I think I definitely would be trying to buy Pollard right now because I think he's, his his volume, especially coming off this this last game and at San Francisco, but who who knows who's in your league. I think I would I would take that gamble and uh, and run with it. Um, you know, the, his, his schedule does, um, you know, come uh, loosen up a little bit gets better exactly and and um you know in championship you know week which is way off and there's a lot of a lot of things to do he's got some some pretty decent matchups the uh the first couple weeks of the playoffs so i think for me i i definitely would uh look to try to acquire him in redraft dynasty man uh, um, and we talked about him in the beginning in in july and in june um of the 
of the summer and i i just i'm, I'm having a really hard gauge on him uh, on, on where i value him as a dynasty player i think that if he's on my team and i thought i was competing and maybe i'm not or maybe i'm going to go into that rebuild mode he's probably one of the first ones that i'm 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 looking for a, a, a takeoff point to get off my team um but but it's just i, I don't know it's just um that's He's only 26, so it's not like he's he's super old. He's produced when he's had the opportunity, um, most for the most part. But I, I just, I, I, I just don't know what he looks like come next year. And so, dynasty wise, I think I'm I'm selling in dynasty, buying in redraft. You got to wait for a rebound with mm -hmm. Pollard, and they, their line, their line hasn't been really healthy all year, which we know this is a really good line. We we kind of knew they were banged up coming into the season. The left tackle hasn't been healthy for a stretch of time throughout he's finally back in but they keep missing at one point they were missing Biotish, uh the left tackle and uh the left guard i think you know just a ridiculous yeah. like th three of the best linemen in the league um mm -hmm. essentially so you know they got the bye week kind of coming up maybe they can get a little healthier on that line feel a little better i'm not 100 percent sure what all those injuries are so somebody could correct me and i'm wrong and say that, that they can't get better but i think it's there he's still Tied for six in targets and and uh, fourth in receptions, uh, but you know what what you're not really seeing is some of maybe the explosive plays that you were seeing from Tony Pollard when when he was kind of the the Robin to the Batman. Um, yeah. And you're I this a guy on Twitter Jacob Gibbs here he's got a, a stat that says uh, Tony Pollard is the lowest avoided tackle rate uh, at seven percent. So that's not something that you thought would be in Tony Pollard's you know, bingo squares. Uh, he, he was always a fairly elusive guy. His missed tackles, missed forced tackles. He's only got six. That's 35th. Yards after contact per attempt, 7.58. Uh, that's good for 29th. So in some of those other stats, he's down low. Now he does have six runs of 10 or more. And that's, you know, that that's okay, but still only 20th. So we're missing some of the explosives a little bit. E even, you know, the 15-yard runs are a little better. He's got four. He's tied for eighth there. Um, so, but the 41st ranked PFF running back right now, uh, as far as their running grade, which isn't the end all be all by any means, he's still RB 10, uh, 14.9 points per game. That's RB 14. Um, if you're, if you're going at it that way, so started off hot and has, has cooled off. He's got the chargers here and then a buy. So seems like you might could get a rebound here against Pollard. Although Kellen Moore might know the kryptonite to Pollard's game. I don't know. Uh, we thought maybe the Cowboys, Having the entire Niners playbook might be their kryptonite, but it, it indeed seemed like it was worse. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. um, so you know, I, I think I mostly agree with you there. Um, I, I think I might be trying to bounce back and, and sell in in dynasty and in redraft. I, I like the idea of a of a buy uh, coming coming this week here to try to grab him and and see. Uh, you know, I think he'll be fine through the season and the state of the running backs in general. Um, I think he'll have some some big games down the stretch and and really help your team here. So, uh, anything you got? Anything, Jay Wayne's on Tony Pollard's? I don't, I don't really know where you stand on Tony Pollard. So it's tough for me in Dynasty just because of the age and he's not going to be in Dallas this year or next year potentially, most likely. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. But with a 26 year old running back, you know. I don't know where I stand on Tony Pollard. I have a hard time with Tony Pollard. I wasn't yeah. really going to chime in. Um, you got something, Big D? Uh, no, I, I mean he's 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 the running back room right now, right? Like in Dallas, he he is it. And and um, you you said it. They're they they definitely have some offensive line woes going on there. But uh, imagine that they're not the only team in the in the league that has those offensive line woes. And so I just um, I, I I I'm just I'm just concerned. But I think that offensive line is going to get better. I think from the redraft angle that we talked about, I, I, I do believe that you could probably get him at a, a, a way better than what his ADP was um, pre, you know, at the, at the beginning of the year. And um, I think your return on investment can, can be there. there yeah. There's, there's definitely a path and I don't think I would spend up for him. Like I'm not sending any of those, um, you know, and in, in a, a previous video, we talked about some of our upper echelon wide receivers and some of those kind of targets. I don't think I'm sending anything like that, but um, you know, I, I, I might send, you know, try to see what, um, you know, well, here's, here's one. We just talked about Rashid Rice. Can I send Rashid Rice off a big game and get Tony Pollard in redraft? I think I would do that just because yeah, I, I don't, don't know what Rice's usage is, right? Like, I don't know um, if you could I do think, that, but if Rice has a big game and McLaughlin has another big game, maybe you could pair those guys up. 
Yeah. yeah. Pollard has another stinker in going into the bye. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think Pollard's is a great buy right now in redraft. I think it's a great point to make. Um, so, yeah, I mean, look, I, I think to wrap this up, I we don't know what the long-term effect of Dynasty of Pollard's going to be. He's on that franchise tag. I don't know that the Cowboys will necessarily pony up to bring him back. It seems like they're, you know, gun shy on running backs right now. We'll see. We'll see what, where they go uh, next year. Maybe just try to play the game and have have a bit cheaper running back. And and maybe Tony Pollard goes back to being in a, a bit more of a of a platoon style where he accelerates and it's it's better for him anyway. And uh, you know, I'm not really throwing any shade on him. I just uh, I think he had some tough matchups here, and I don't, I don't think he necessarily needs to be in a platoon, but we haven't seen it. And when, when we haven't seen things and it's not working out, it's a, see, I told you so. Uh, so <laughs> Knew it. I knew yeah. it. <laughs> um, so, you know, efficiency doesn't scale. Uh, so, all right. We appreciate you guys. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment below, all that jazz. If you're listening on the podcast, five-star reviews are much appreciated. You can hop over to patreon.com backslash JFF Dynasty. You can hit us with the $5 holler. We got uh, three extra shows a month going down over there plus the discord chat um so a uh, lot lot of fun a lot of uh a lot of, lot of good people over there and people helping people uh with with trades and all that stuff it's a good good way to find bounce your trades off of not only us but the other people in that group uh good good way to you know a lot of people don't have people like we're lucky we got people to talk to it's to bounce trades off of it's nice to just throw it in a collective group and see what the group think is on on those things so Got to avoid that group thing, so. Well, yeah, but our group, though. Yeah. <laughs> the brainstorm, the brainstorming is very strong um, in, yeah. in, in, in the courts, so, in the yeah. discords. Yeah, and if you don't, uh, if you can't make it over to the Patreons for the $5 holler, just hit hit, hit a like, subscribe, hit, hit a five-star review if you're listening on the podcast, on iTunes or Spotify, that helps us out significantly. So we, we see the numbers, let's, let's get some of them five stars up. We appreciate everybody for joining us, and uh, we'll be back soon. More Dynasty and Redraft analysis for your pleasure. Pleasurable, 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 pleasurable. Peace. Peace.